Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Norm Schriever. I wanted to bring you an exclusive interview with Rich Pearson of Upwork. Upwork.com, of course, is one of the world's leading uh, virtual job platforms where it connects employers with uh, employees who work virtually all over the world, whether you're an expat living in Costa Rica and the Philippines, Thailand, or just someone who wants to be location independent and work from home in the U.S., Canada, or just have a lot of options. Uh, Upwork is one of the best in the world. So this interview with Rich is a couple years old. Um, I think he has moved on to a different position, but there's a lot of great insight in here. So I finally wanted to put it together and share it with you. I hope you enjoy and get a few nuggets of info out of it, how you can be a digital nomad or work virtually as well. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day. Well, as you know, um, you know, Upwork was created by uh, the merger of Elance and Odesk. So I have now been uh, with Upwork or its predecessors for a little over five years. So, and been really privileged to see the growth of uh, freelancing, digital nomads, and in really the growth in companies mm. uh, being willing and uh, now seeking out uh, freelancers for really special tasks as well as ways to build their bench. So that, that's been uh, really fun, and I feel lucky to be uh, part of that uh, kind of uh, movement, if you will. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And that's the important part, right, is uh, there's plenty of people willing to work. It's getting the, the companies on board that the really uh, reaches critical mass, huh? Yeah, I think we, we spend most of our time um, – engaging with companies and educating them that there is a different way to, uh, to hire talent, particularly where um, we know we've got uh, you know, a lot been written about the skills gaps and the availability of talent. Uh, and it's been fun to see companies kind of open their eyes and uh, ranging from small businesses to startups to large Fortune 500 companies who are now uh, rapidly adopting this concept of workers uh, who live, you know, in other places or at least don't come into the office. Yeah, yeah, great. Um, and so now, I don't know if it was the same title before, but um, other than calling you the king of Upwork, you're a senior vice president of marketing. Is that correct? That is. I'm far from the king. <laughs> I, 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 I Christina is actually my boss and tells me what to do. You know, I, be I believe that, actually. I, I have no trouble believing that. Yeah, it's just, it's just a matter of months before it happens. But <laughs> I, I lead the, the marketing and customer success teams at, at Upwork, and that is, uh, you know, focused both on driving and educating businesses on how they can uh, take advantage uh, of uh, services like Upwork and really hire freelancers and and then uh, managing the customer success aspect is managing uh, our best customers. So we have uh, like an account management team and, uh, you know, everything from awareness to acquisition and retention of both businesses and freelancers is what uh, I'm, I'm focused on. Mm, fantastic. Yeah. And maybe... Um... Not to deviate too much, but um, maybe you guys could shoot over some statistics or something like that or some information about, you know, maybe you have a, a, a already a PDF or something about the benefits to companies, you know, the, the studies into time management and cost savings and anything like that I could include as well. Yeah, we, we absolutely have a, a, a report on future workforce that focuses on businesses adopting and why they're adopting and the benefits that they're seeing. So yeah, I think that would be a great addition. Perfect. Perfect. So, um, yeah, in a, in a nutshell, um, what is Upwork? So Upwork is the largest freelancing website. Uh, it's a two sided marketplace, um, where you have businesses and independent professionals and we're helping them find each other mm -hmm. and then work together online. Okay. Fantastic. And, and you know that that involves um, not only finding and working, but paying. Yeah. And, you know, we think of our, of our vision. Our vision is really to connect businesses with great talent to work without limits. And 
really the traditional limitations of working in your, you know, 50 mile radius commute, or, you know, in some cases, uh, even, even more than that, but really trying to, uh, help companies and, uh, talent rethink what that, what work is and that work is not, not a place. Mm. Yeah. Good. That's a great way of saying it. Good point. Um, and I'm jotting down some notes here. And so with the payment feature, is that relatively new? I don't remember if that was with Elance and Odesk, if you had a, a self, you know, a onboard payment feature, or if that's new. Uh, that, that has been uh, a key part of our service. As you know, uh, you know, the two challenges for freelancers, two main challenges are finding work um, and, and good clients, and then getting paid for that work once they do that uh, and making sure they're not spending all their time chasing down clients for payment. So, mm. uh, so we, we can talk about some of our guarantees that we have, but absolutely the payment uh, is done through Upwork and then the, uh, the freelancer can choose their payment method. Uh, and we have a handful of those which we can talk about later too. Okay. Fantastic. Um, so typically, and I know it's probably a big range, but, who do you see? Uh, you mentioned that it. Uh, who who uses Upwork? You mentioned on the on the business side, it's anything from startups to Fortune 500. Um, how about for the the typical or the range of uh, actual employees? What do you see? Yeah, so we don't we don't refer to them as employees, but as freelancers, you know it's. Um, you know, I'll start with a broad statement and then get a little uh, more specific. So, um, we it, it's really knowledge work and anything that can be delivered online or any service that you can provide online as a freelancer mm-hmm. um, is in demand mm-hmm. on Upwork. Um, where that, and we track over 5,000 skills in over 100 uh, categories. Uh, so, uh, we have this really interesting view where um, a business posts a job looking for a particular skill, and then we'll take that skill and that client's location and match it with a freelancer who has proven to have those skills mm-hmm. or claim to have those skills. And, um, you know, what breaks down to the type of job, you know, web, mobile, and software developers are, is about 50% of the, the the work and freelance skills that are in demand. Hmm. Um, graphic graphic design and content production is another big uh, uh, category. Uh, advertising, sales, and digital marketing, uh, and then translation, localization, and writing. So you know, as companies are looking either they're beating up their content marketing, as they're looking for ghostwriters, as they're looking for uh, more substantive content pieces, mm-hmm. that, that's certainly there. And then the, the fifth kind of big, big tranche is uh, really customer support mm. and, you know, kind of the administration, whether that's research or virtual assistance, but with, you know, services like Zendesk and more companies uh, looking to have real-time customer support mm-hmm. uh, and using using freelancers to, to provide that uh and also provide the 24-7 coverage that most businesses are trying to achieve these days. Interesting. So those are the five big, big trends. Um, do you guys, by the way, I know you, you mentioned the virtual assistants, but do they do a lot in, um, do you have a lot of freelancers in the call center? I think it's called BPO or something like that industry. Because I know over in the Philippines, that is enormous business. It, it is an enormous business, but we're kind of that, that, the anti BPO, if you will, where um, there there is certainly a large number of customer service agents who work in uh, the Philippines for our clients. But the advantage is, and as you know, if you've been uh, in Manila, uh, we often get the best ones because they don't want to do the three hour uh, commute to get into the the location. So um, so we are almost like a virtual BPO if, if you think about that. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Um, and, and he- and the only other difference that I would want to emphasize is there, it's not like an Upwork. Uh, we, we're not the employers of any of these freelancers. It's always directly from the business to the freelancer. So yeah. uh, we don't have any physical locations in, in 
uh, Philippines. You're you're the matchmaker. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Um, so it was it's interesting that you told me these different these different popular kind of jobs. Um, some of them obviously web development and software development. It's it's very highly specialized. But can a quote unquote uh, regular or normal person, just with you know educated person, get on there and and do well and make some money, or is it really aimed towards people with specialized training or skills? It's a lot easier for people with specialized training and skills because, um, you know, I consider myself kind of a, a, a good athlete worker where I have, you know, I can do, you know, a fair amount of things. Um, when a business is coming to Upwork, they're typically looking to get one project done or one thing done. And being great at a particular skill makes you more attractive um, and because you're looking at a profile you might say like if, if I want a PR expert uh, or a communications expert and I see Christina's profile and she's really deep in PR and you see my profile who has dabbled in PR knows enough to be dangerous I'm going to absolutely hire uh, or the client will absolutely hire Christina because of that specialization yeah. um, now Someone may hire Christina and say, like, holy cow, she has a, many more skills than just comm, and then it becomes a, a much broader assignment. But uh, in general, being a specialist or at least uh, focusing on one or two things that you do well um, helps immensely in getting hired. Mm. Uh, that doesn't mean that somebody who's a general can't come in and claim this, whether it's research or, uh, you know, uh, customer support or or writing but usually you have to pick one thing so when when someone's looking at your resume or your profile that you see on upwork they 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 can see that you're great at this one thing yeah yeah and that's that's good advice too for people getting on there and getting started um like me part of part of my article is going to be of course the user experience from uh you know, getting on Upwork for the first time and getting a profile going, which I have done and started to get familiar with it. So instead of uh, being too broad, it's trying to specialize in, in one thing to, to get more uh, work. Huh? Yeah, no, I think that's, that's awesome that you're doing that. I think also just looking at, you know, this kind of tip, looking at what other successful freelancers, how they portray themselves and, and you know, browsing the, the job feeds that are coming in so you can see what people are looking for and, and the language that they're using mm. uh, uh, for for the types of skills uh, uh, so you know, in, in this regionally people call you know different work work different things so uh, uh, you know my wife is a freelance writer and she you know she didn't really consider herself a content marketer. Mm -hmm. you know, she thought, you know, I can, I'm a blogger and I can write long form pieces. But now that she sees that this industry is evolving and there's much more demand for uh, something other than just writers mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, content marketing can mean many things, but that tends to be the, the terminology that a lot of people use these days. Yeah. You got to talk the lingo, huh? Um, yeah. So let's see. Uh... Speaking of that, I mean, you used the word a couple times, claim, like people could go on there and, and claim to have certain um, uh, skills or specialization or education. But as I see already, that's why you have uh, the tests, which I, I know there's a whole bunch of them that you guys have for freelancers to take and get some sort of uh, standard of accreditation. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. So there, there are skill tests that you take and then... Um, you know, the, the one, and those are great to show your skills. And then we have, um, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about, uh, we have premium talent pools mm -hmm. that uh, will actually do deeper tests to, uh, to make sure that you are an expert, to try and find experts. So as we find, as we have services and businesses looking for uh, expert talent, we're able to, uh, you know, you know make sure that we can deliver on that. Um, the, the other thing that is, <clears throat> excuse me, also really important is are the ratings that businesses will see that like, Hey, you've done this job and you've gotten a great rating. And that will often be the, uh, the, the pro 
profile and work history is often will be the the way that you get chosen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, in terms of the the test too, a second part of that question: Do you guys offer any sort of uh, training or resources or education platforms for people to um, you know improve their their skill set proactively? Yeah, so we have uh, what we call a hiring headquarters, which is um, a repository of content and best practices in specific skill sets. So that's mostly content. Um, and then, as you mentioned, we have the skill set. Um, and then we partner. You know, we've, we've thought about, you know, how we could do our own training, but there's so many great training um, platforms out there. So we partner and really just direct people um, and have some offers in our resource center for uh, that, that discounts on true training services like Pluralsight, Udemy. Um, you know, there's there's a there's a bunch of them out there, but uh, we 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 let the experts do that. We focus on uh, what we know, and that's why freelancers are successful and uh, and helping them be successful on Upwork. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. There's like you said, there's enough. Uh training out there in, in the universe, you don't need to replicate it. You, you could still offer it, right? Um, with partnerships. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and to your point on getting started, you know, we have these badges that are, that are probably new since we spoke last. And so as you, um, so, so stepping back, we have three real services that we, um, that we, that we offer right now. Um, and three offerings, there's upwork.com and that's, if you go there, it's the largest freelance up, freelancer marketplace. And we have Upwork Pro, which are really clients who are looking for premium freelancers. So this is really hand-picked premium freelancers for long-term projects. Mm-hmm. And then we have Upwork Enterprise, which is a full-service premium talent solution that enables large businesses to hire at scale. Mm. So th- those are the offerings meant to help support those offerings we have this premium talent program that I mentioned. So as you join and show early traction, we'll put a badge rising talent that shows that you are a new and up and coming freelancer and you should pay attention to this person and consider this person. Um, And then there's top rated. And this is a, uh, someone who has proven time and time again within uh, Upwork to satisfy clients Mm. for a particular skill and they'll get, um, they typically have longer tenure, so you'll see uh, it just recognizes those freelancers who are able to do a great job satisfying clients. Great. Uh, serious question. Could I get one of those badges by buying you and Christina coffee? <laughs> we, um, so let me, I, not on the top rated, no, I think <laughs> you're probably going to end up getting one uh, if, if, you're jo- if you've joined or joined based on your, your history. I wouldn't be surprised if you get rising talent anyway. Uh, the you know one thing that we have also changed, and it sounds like you've already gotten through this, is um, we're not allowing everybody into the marketplace into Upwork on the freelancer side. Yeah, uh, there there is a, a an apply for admission uh, to this, and this just reflects not only the uh, the demand uh, to find work. Uh, in the U.S. and around the world, but also um, the the quality and the curation that we're trying to do mm-hmm. um, uh, on our marketplace, and so um, that's that's something that you've already gotten through. It sounds like because um, when you said you were joining, I'm like uh, uh, I, I was confident that you would get in, but I'm happy that you did. Uh, and that that's done on things like you mentioned skill test based on skill test work history. Um, in some cases, the categories uh, mm-hmm. where, you know, if you're, if you're a mobile developer right now, given the demand for mobile development talent, um, most get in. And then if you're a writer, uh, given that there are uh, lots of at least claimed writers, mm-hmm. you know, because that tends to be a generalist skill or at least that people claim, uh, we we are a little. We scrutinize those profiles a little more heavily. Yeah, you need to be uh, not only matchmaker but a uh, gatekeeper a tiny bit, huh? To to keep the quality high. It, it, yeah, it's just quality, and you know, our we go to 
find some businesses and say that you know we're providing agency quality talent. So we want to be able to live up to that. Yeah, yeah. Um, speaking of that too, is it um, in general? Is it um, pretty hard for people to get? started on Upwork? It seems like um, until you get your first few jobs and good reviews and stuff like that, it's it's the chicken and the egg, right? No one wants to hire someone who has no reviews and has not worked at all. Um, So any tips or any, you know, encouragement for folks who are getting started? Yeah, I mean, I I think you're right that there is a learning curve and also just an experience curve. Um, And one that we talked about is really your profile and, and, and making sure you're focusing on your best skills, not every skill yeah. um, that you have. Um, and the, and the other is, um, and this is where writers have an advantage uh, are, are the proposals. Um, you know, this, it typically it becomes a job is posted, then proposals are sent and, and then proposals then go to interview stage and then hiring. Mm. And, uh, so the proposal, the, the specificity, the uh, you, know, you know, adding a little bit of your personality to the, the 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 proposal to make sure that they know who they're hiring, because um, hiring is still a pretty personal decision. Yeah. Um, and then and then really, you know, not being afraid to go to bat for yourself as to why you think you're the best person for the job. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, I think the the ease of being able to submit a proposal online. Um, uh, sometimes works against people getting hired because they don't uh, they don't put the thought into if they had met that person, you know they would they would tell a lot more of their story. Yeah, so having a story to tell and including that in your proposal, I think um, we've seen be very successful as a strategy. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the great equalizer or the forum to uh, to add, like you said, some personalization and to show that you're already willing to to put into the, the work into it, huh? Um, yeah. Fantastic. And one thing that we, one thing that we've done to try and level the playing field as much as possible for new freelancers is enable them, enable freelancers to bring their own client. Cause if you bring a client onto the platform, um, that's just a, a, a quality signal that you can satisfy clients at, at, at a high level. So that's something that we, um, encourage and actually, uh, to inform new freelancers when they're joining that this is a great way to get started too. Oh yeah, you could migrate your existing clients on there, huh? And then yeah, fantastic. Exactly. Yeah. Um. So in terms of both the clients and the freelancers, what um, what what countries are you guys in or or not in at this point? I mean, how how international versus a U.S. Uh, or North America product is this? It's definitely global. We have freelancers and clients in 180 countries. Wow. Fantastic. Um, let's see. And do you see, do you see a uptick or a, a lot of growth mostly in the U.S. market or is it international firms and freelancers? What kind of trends are you seeing? Uh, we continue to see a growth in many countries, I think in countries that have less local and, and really regions, not just countries that have less local opportunities, mm. we certainly see more freelancers. So that that could be like what we said in Honduras or say in middle America where there you know, not as many job opportunities right now. Yeah. Um, so, so from that side, uh, on the freelancer side, that's where we, that's where we see growth, but it's really a problem all countries and mm-hmm. more and more uh, more and more uh, workers and even students. I know Christina has talked a little bit about uh, freelancing in America specifically, but you know, with each generation, uh, more and more people are choosing to freelance rather than use it as a, a backup plan. Yeah. And that's, that's driving the most growth globally and specifically in the U.S. Uh, where we're close to we're over sixty percent are choosing freelancing as a as a choice. New mm. freelancers, and that's that's something that's changed dramatically since when we talked. And certainly in the five years that I've been here. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Um, how has tech and developments in tech really aided what you guys are doing or helped your growth? 
quite a bit, both from a um, kind of behavioral standpoint where companies are more uh, willing to use, uh, you know, distribute and work with distributed teams thanks to products like Slack, um, you know, increased usage of, of Skype. Uh, we have our own uh, actually Slack-like communication, like messenger tool mm-hmm. that allows uh, freelancers and clients to engage in real time and, and have everything in one place. Mm. And that's definitely new since we last spoke. Um, but it, it, there's, there's been a shift in the mentality, uh, both of being able to, you know, work with someone who's in the distributed team, as well as just the, in most regions, increase in connectivity and uh, high-speed uh, internet. Although, I, from your, your conversation earlier, your comments earlier, it's, uh, it, it's still kind of spotty sometimes at, at cafes. Well, you know, it's interesting in, in uh, Asia in general, like, you know, Southeast Asia, where there's a million backpackers and freelancers and expatriates uh, and stuff, you get um, Thailand, the internet's great, Vietnam, it's great, you know, but Philippines is like uh, lagging way behind. It's almost like the, the AOL dial-up, you know? So, uh, th- yeah, they have their own challenges with technology and all that fun stuff. Um, who, who do you guys think uh, now your, your biggest competition is? And I think it's really um, it's still the biggest is apathy and the difference in um, working working the same way and, and thinking, oh, I can't find anyone in my town mm-hmm. or I can't find a job locally, therefore. So really it's an awareness and an education that this is, this is a viable and in some ways a very advantageous way of working. Um, you know, we have um, the, the, the amount of people who are, uh, who are, who are now coming online and, and choosing Choosing to work online is uh, has made that uh, less so. I think you know staffing agencies would be another way of thinking about it. And I'm sure where you are, you run in and see kind of people who work on freelancer.com. So that's that's probably the one that we see. Um, but you know, whereas we're focusing on quality uh, quality freelancers and really focusing there, I think they have a slightly different angle. Um, yeah. they're, they're slightly different than uh, slightly different than quality, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh. All right, fantastic. I mean, um, one thing on technology, I thought I'd share that I that I didn't mention besides kind of Slack is just, um, and this will be in the study that that we share, but seventy seven percent of freelancers say technology is making it easier to find freelance work, mm. and. Um, that's, that's up eight points since 2014. So we continue to see that um, grow. Mm. And, uh, you know, 59% of freelancers say they obtained work online in the past year. And that's up 17 points since 2014. So wow. this, as a channel, as a way of working, it's driving and um, it's also increasing to a greater share of work that they're finding online. So, mm. uh, it's 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 just kind of systemic in in, in freelancers. And you guys also um, correct me if I'm wrong. You guys have a mobile app too, right? Yes, yes, and that really is helpful for freelancers uh, and clients who are on the go to for communication as well as seeing when jobs come in that uh, uh, seem to uh, are very applicable. No, oh, that's account. huge because you know most people in these. Uh, you know, in some of these countries that I see and stuff there, you know, the, without a smartphone, they'd be lost. So it's, it's not just a, a luxury. They really, you know, that's how they could stay connected or like you say, uh, apply for jobs or message without having to go to an internet cafe or having to plug in their computer and stuff. So, um, totally. that's great. Um, what do you see for the, the future of virtual work and, and freelance work? I, I mean, I, I, I've been lucky to see kind of it, it ramp, and, you know, uh, we saw just in the U.S. the freelance workforce growing three times faster just in this last year, hmm. and you know, by, you know, it seems a long way away, but we believe in 10 years that freelancing will be the majority of, uh, of, of 
way that people work. And, and we're already seeing in some regions this happen. And uh, it's, uh, you know, the, the, the thing that's driving it and we'll see that's in our future workforce report is that clients are hiring freelancers as, as a, uh, at a higher rate too. It's a two-sided equation. Um, nearly half are already using uh, flexible workers and 55% expect to have more freelancers in 2000, uh, you know, in 2017, and we're seeing that. So, uh, just as a as a teaser for what Christina is going to share, show you, we had in the U.S. alone 57 over 57 million freelancers or people freelance uh, this year. Wow, that's incredible. Well, that's a lot of great info. Thanks a lot to Rich Pearson of Upwork for all the. Really good insight into how uh, digital nomads and expats can work, whether it's from Costa Rica, Thailand, Philippines, anywhere in the world, and still make a living as they travel and live abroad.